this is Dr. Porjan Nusen, Assistant Professor in English at Deshpande College for Girls, Kolkata. And I'd like to thank Dhamdam Motijil College for inviting me to deliver a virtual talk as part of their official YouTube channel. And today I'm going to be taking you guys through a sort of a very brief crash course on feminism or the different schools of feminist thought and politics in uh, in largely in the western sort of western discourses and let me begin by trying to you know formulate an idea of what feminism is you know these days we use the word feminisms instead of feminism because feminism does not refer to just any one particular school of thought or ideology but a set of you know ideologies or discourses um and you know uh, let us look at you know very briefly through these different sort of modules of feminist thought feminist theory and praxis and um let's just sort of try and define what feminism is you know feminism is a set of ideological political and you know social critique of the institution of patriarchy you know that's how i see uh, i read feminism and uh, feminism has different sort of forms of articulation now we have to go back to one of the earliest schools of feminist thought and praxis uh, that that is known as the first wave feminism or liberal feminism and which which has its roots in the french revolution and you know uh, how um, a writer like mary wollstonecraft she talks about in a book vindication of the rights of women in written in 1970 92 she talks about you know she she has a dialogue with the ideas of you know universal brotherhood which is which is foregrounded in the french revolution you know the french revolution is a sort of momentous event in human history and it foregrounds the idea of universal human rights the ideas of equality liberty and fraternity and you know wollstonecraft you know in a sort of a dialogue with the french revolution she foregrounds the idea that you know who is this universal subject uh, at the receiving end of of this dis at the receiving end of the of this discourse of human rights universal human rights it is it is man so whenever you know one says uh, the ideas of liberty equality and fraternity the universal brotherhood it is man it is men who are being referred to and then wollstonecraft then talks about the need to vindicate the woman within this framework of you know universal rights universal human rights and that's the main sort of you know crux of her book 1792 book and that in many ways you know heralds the the first wave of feminist thought and praxis the first wave of feminism which was largely about equal rights which was which, which was largely about the suffragist movement where women were fighting for the equal right to vote the right to education the right to property so the idea of equality with men this forms the bedrock of the liberal feminist movement or the first wave feminism as as we have come to understand it now um moving on to uh you know what what then becomes this big becomes known as second wave feminism or radical feminism you know the radical feminists writing mostly in the sort of second half of the 20th century in europe uh they would say that you know claiming equality with men may not be enough you know one needs to somewhere bring in the institution of patriarchy and talk about and criticize the institution of patriarchy and talk about women's rights over their own bodies women's sexuality you know that is a a very very important you know, aspect which needs to be foregrounded when we are talking about women's rights and you know writers like kate millet and jermaine greer they they talk about the importance of critiquing the institution the social institution the ideological institution of patriarchy so you know liberal feminism whereas that posits the idea of equality and you know the idea of you know equality in in different spheres you know whether it relates to the suffragist movement whether it relates to women's right to education radical feminism would foregar foreground a critique of the patriarchy and kate millet in her famous book sexual politics written in 19 published in 1970 uh, she talks about you know this institution of patriarchy and how that interpellates the you know the subjectivities of women how you know patriarchy functions like a social ideological institution which sort of 
marginalizes women and uh, also you know taking on from here we'll, we'll talk about it in a while adrian richards uh kate miller talks about how patriarchy is a social institution it marginalizes women and there is a need to within feminist discourse there's a need to foreground the idea of patriarchy and to critique and challenge the institution of patriarchy okay and um, you know another very important radical feminist uh, was Germaine Greer. Her book, *The Female Eunuch*, is also published in 1970. Um, due to paucity of time, I'm just sort of you know this is like a crash course of sorts, so I cannot go into very much into detail of each of these schools. So this is almost like a touch and go thing I'm doing with the different modules of feminist thought and praxis. Then we come uh, taking taking on from uh, drawing upon. Uh, these ideas that are, that are raised in the second wave feminist movement or radical feminist movement which is also often you know nicknamed as bra burning feminism from this incident where women were you know the right over their own bodies they were they were you know there was a movement and uh, of, of burning their undergarments and it's also often labeled as bra burning feminism and taking on from that adriel rich in her very very famous important essay published in 1980 called compulsory heterosexuality and the lesbian existence she talks about the institution of heterosexuality just like millet foregrounds the institution of patriarchy adrian rich talks about the institution of heterosexuality how that also becomes a sort of institution in itself and how you know everybody woman every and she she's talking mainly about women's experiences and how women are always already automatically presumed as heterosexual and she speaks about the need for foregrounding the very innate relationship that women form with each other beginning with the bond that a mother has with the daughter a sister has with her blood sister and she talks about this idea of sisterhood the idea of the lesbian continuum that is posited as a sort of counter discourse as an ideological counterpoint to this institution of compulsory heterosexuality so radical feminism queer feminism very very important sort of moments in 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 the radical feminist sort of second wave feminist movement uh, moving on uh, we have ideas uh, the idea of marxist feminism where there's a conflation of uh, class and gender and you know marxist feminists would sort of they speak about of course like marxists they also speak about a need for a social revolution and uh, through the class revolution uh, a gender revolution is already automatically included in the idea of a class revolution and there's something else that uh, marxist feminists also talk about they they conceptualize this idea of labor and the idea of uh, you know productive labor versus what is seen as unproductive labor and this is something that capitalism sort of highlights how the labor outside the home is sort of remunerated labor it brings the salary you know it, you, it's paid labor it's remunerated labor and this is within capitalism sort of makes these distinctions with the with the advent of the nuclear family how the outside labor the remunerated labor is the realm of the man and domestic labor which is non-remunerated labor is the you know realm of the woman and fem marxist feminism would, would also critique this idea and of course the labor the word labor has different connotations it also refers to reproductive labor but the whole idea is to you know challenge this this uh, capitalist discourse on labor and that is something else that marxist feminists also talk about um, you have marxist feminists like charlotte perkins Gilman, you have the russian feminists like alexandra kolontai and you know they they sort of you know talk about the need you have the view of the american feminist Be betty frieden and you know she talks about this whole idea of baby boom and you know the the the, ad the advent of you know capitalism you know a new the movement of america towards a globalized towards a globalized economy towards a new capitalist economy okay moving on from that we have uh, french feminism um um a very very sort of you know influenced by the the psychoanalytical theories of Sigmund Freud, of Jacques Lacan, and French feminists like Helene Sixieu um, in, her, in her essay, The Love of the Medusa, written, published in 1975, she talks about the need for, you know, writing about, for women writing about experiences which are unique to women. Um, she, she formulates the idea of the écriture féminine 
or, or writing the body and she you know she discusses the idea that you know there are certain experiences such as menstruation such as you know motherhood and these are very very sort of these are very very um, unique to women these experiences and she, and she talks about the need for bringing in these experiences within writing and you know throughout history uh, you know it's mostly men who have represented women and you know uh, six you talks about the need for women writing their bodies the whole idea of writing the body writing about experiences which are unique to your body this is something that is conceptualized as the acrity of feminine within helen six hughes essay the laugh of the medusa okay now you know these the ones uh, you know the, the different kind of feminist discourses that i i was just speaking about liberal feminism uh sorry radical yeah liberal feminism radical feminism queer feminism or lesbian feminism marxist feminism um french feminism these are you know primarily western sort of discourses uh, on feminist thought and praxis and let's move to a sort of very interesting school of feminism which is becomes popularly known as black feminism and you have writers such as bell hooks and audrey lord they talk about this idea called the black feminism something that personally appeals a lot to me you know this whole idea you know uh, bell hooks in her book uh, from the from the margin to the center and she talks about and all the black feminists are talking about this they speak about this whole idea of patriarchy and you know what they are trying to say is you know patriarchy has to be considered uh, has to be sort of talked of you know in in uh, together with other vectors of marginalization so marginalization doesn't always work across along one vector there are other vectors of marginalization so you have to you know you have to put forth you have to foreground ideas of you know caste ideas of you know racism ideas of class and you know patriarchy is inflected by and through all these different other vectors of marginalization and black feminists uh, would say that the experiences of a black woman is under patriarchy is very very different from the experience of a european white woman under patriarchy so the two cannot be conflated and as and seen as and you know the same so you know for instance um, and you know all of you some of you may be familiar with you know the the history of the black movement you know uh, how sort of you know the idea of the slave ships and you know how you know africans were you know uh, sort of you know used in the they were they were sort of bought and used in different coffee plantations and you know black feminist would say that you know the way for instance motherhood is conceptualized by black women you know uh, for the slaves uh, the child would also be the property of the slave owner and sometimes the child would be sold you know after immediately after birth and you know would be raised on another by an, in another sort of slave commune by a different group of uh, you know black women so this idea of a community motherhood you know this is very different from a white woman's understanding of motherhood so the black feminists would talk of the need for uh, you know foregrounding both forms of marginalizations uh, marginalization marginalization which is based on uh, race and marginalization which is also you know vis-a-vis -vis apropos gender so you know both these forms of mar marginalization they would be talking about this double marginalization and you know they would be reiterating the need for talking about black women's experiences of patriarchy separately from white white women's uh, experiences of patriarchy and you know lastly you know something that is very very important in in today's context and it's being talked about a lot is this idea of eco criticism eco feminism um, and uh, you know this idea that uh, you know indigenous women they are somehow you know closer to nature and we have to go back to the chipko movement uh, which happened in uttarakhand present day uttarakhand and you know um the idea that women adivasi women indigenous women uh, their understanding of nature is somehow you know more sort of they're closer to nature uh, than men and somehow these women they can launch uh, and they they somehow are implicated within an alternate knowledge system 
a knowledge system that challenges the forces of you know modern neoliberal capitalist economies and also sort of posits its own uh, knowledge system that is closer to of course nature that takes in the different sort of ecological dimensions and indigenous communities whether in northeast india whether in the himalayas whether in the sort of the mainland india they somehow you know are far more interlinked they have interlinked lives with the forests with with the wildlife and you know indigenous women they talk about this need this need for you know uh, foregrounding an alternate knowledge system and you know um, so you know schools like eco feminism schools like uh, black feminism uh, even post colonial feminism these are becoming sort of you know very very important moot points of discussions now within the academia so um, in this very short sort of uh, crash course uh, almost like a crash course on feminism i've taken you through some of the important schools of modern feminist thought in western discourses and as as a counter to these uh, sort of uh, uh, eurocentric uh, ideas of feminism i've tried to posit uh, two alternate models that of black feminism and that of eco feminism and i hope that i have been able to reach out to some of you and you know in a, in a very very basic and simple way at least introduce to you some of these moot points uh, related to feminist theory and praxis so i thank you and once again i thank damdam moti jil college for inviting me uh, to deliver this special lecture so have a good weekend and have a good day thank you